All right, guys, uh, good evening and uh, welcome to another video for Maths World Education. This is Matt. Uh, and and uh, in today's video, I'm going to show you the question to uh, uh, the solution, sorry, to question two. Uh, and this is taken from the Step 2 2019 uh, paper. Now, what, what I like about this particular question uh, is uh, it shows you a lot of, uh, shows you a lot of integration. Uh, there's, a lot, there's a bit of curve sketching involved uh, at the beginning. And... Of course, it's to do with calculus, which is my, personally, it's my favourite topic when it comes to uh, step paper questions. So what's it talking about here? Uh, let's just do a quick overview of the question. It tells you that the f of, zero, f of 0 equals 0, so we know the curve goes through the origin. We also know that f dashed of t is greater than 0, so we know the gradient is always going to be positive. Uh, and that tells you that the, uh, the f of t is always going to be positive when t is greater than 0. So it's asking us to, uh, to prove this result here by uh, by means of a sketch. Now, somehow, I think that this uh, is going to be helpful with uh, the following parts of, uh, of question 2. And I've also noticed something as well. It's, it's asking you here to evaluate g of t between 2 and 0 with respect to t. Now, somehow, that looks, but this here looks remarkably similar to this first bit here, just that you've got the value g and not f. Um, so I've got a feeling that it's going to there's going to be some rearranging involved, and it's going to be a similar case as well uh, for h of t here, and it's giving us this uh, quite interesting looking uh, real function here. It's the same for h as well. Uh, but without further ado, let's jump straight in and see how we get on. So what we've got then, I've just sketched a curve here, and you can see, you can see already. If you let the first, uh, if you let the first term be equal to i one, and the second term to be equal to i two, well, you can see, uh, you can see already uh, for the first part that that's just simply uh, the integral uh, between x and zero, which is x and zero here. You've got t going along the t-axis, and you've got f of t, which is the f of t axis, the y axis if you like. Uh, so let's just focus on i1. So it's, it's basically just the area under the curve here. Now i2 is a little bit more involved because you, you're looking at an in, you're looking at the inverse function f to the minus 1 of y with respect to y. Okay. Uh, now the inverse function is simply, it's, it's basically whatever the area is going to be whatever uh, whatever the area is under the inverse function, but you're dealing with a y-axis, or uh, simply stated, the the f of t axis. So uh, in this case, the the y-axis is, is simply just the same as uh, f of t, effectively. Uh, they've, they've done it in a really weird way here, but uh, for this initial part, uh, it's all it's all it's really asking you to show is that it, it's just asking you really to recognize that the... Uh, the the sum of the two integrals, the two different terms, is the same as uh, the area of a rectangle, and we can see here that the we can see that the uh, the base is equal to x and the height is equal to f of x, uh, which is simply just x times f of x. Yeah, so therefore, x f of x is equal to i one plus i two, uh, and if you if you did the sketch like this, you would get full marks in the initial part. Um, I'm pretty sure that the examiner isn't asking you to recognise anything else other than just that. So let's uh, let's jump into uh, the second part now of question two. All right, guys. So um, here we've got uh, part one now of uh, question uh, number two, and it's, t it's saying the real function g is defined for all t by g of t cubed plus g of t equals t. So, first of all, it's saying prove that g of zero is equal to zero. So, the first thing I'm gonna, the first thing I'm gonna do here is just uh, is I'm gonna use uh, this formula here. I'm simply just gonna write, well, it's the same as saying g of zero cubed plus g of zero is equal to zero on the right hand side. Now, uh, the best thing to do now is to take out a factor of g of zero. So, therefore. You've got g of 0, and then you've got g of 0 squared plus 1 is equal to 0. Now, what can we what can we tell here? Well, the first, first of all, 
G of zero must be uh, greater than or equal to uh, zero. So therefore, G, uh, G of zero squared plus one must be greater than or equal to one. But um, so 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 basically, we know that G of zero plus one cannot be equal to zero as a result of uh, of what we've just found out above here. But the right hand side is equal to zero, so the only other possibility is for um, g of zero to be equal to zero. So that's the, so, so, so that's the first bit here that we've managed to uh, prove. Now it's saying, uh, now it's asking us to show that the, uh, the derivative of g of t is greater than zero. And the best way to approach this is simply by um, uh, differentiating explicitly. So if we look at the left hand, uh, left hand side first, we can see that 3 of g of t uh, squared times g dashed of t plus the derivative of g of t, which is simply g, just, uh, g dashed of t, equals the, the, the right hand side, which is the derivative of t, which is simply equal to 1. Now what we can do is take out a factor now of g dashed of t, uh, and if we do that, uh, we can see that 3 g of t, uh, I'm just going to put the square there, it doesn't really make much odds, plus 1 equals 1. Now we can see now um, g of t squared is always going to be greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so therefore, three times g t squared plus one must also be greater than or equal to. Uh, well, in this case, it's actually going to be greater than or equal to uh, uh, greater than or equal to zero, which is greater than or equal to one because of you got because you, because you got this one term here. Now. The right hand side is positive. Three g of uh, three g of three g of t squared plus one is greater than or equal to one, which also must be positive. So basically, g dash of t must also be uh, be positive as well. Therefore, g dash of t is going to be greater than zero. And the reason of the reason of uh, the reason I haven't put greater than or equal to zero because it's impossible that g dashed of t is equal to zero because if it was then the left hand side would be equal to zero which is not equal to the right hand side which is one. So therefore it's enough just to say that g dashed of t is positive and there we've proven uh, both results here. Now it's asking us to evaluate uh, g uh, it's asking us now evaluate uh, the following integral, which is just here. So now, some of you might be thinking, "Well, what the hell is this? How? What's that got? What has this got to do with uh, what we've just found out?" Well, these findings, which we've just found out here, allows us to um, use this formula because if you notice, it's saying f of zero equals zero, f dash of t is greater than zero. Well. For t is greater than zero. Well, we've just proven all those terms. So what we can do now that allows us to use uh, this formula here. So let's let's use this formula and let's just see how we uh, let's just see how we get on. So looking at this, we can see. Actually, I'm just gonna um, do some copy and pasting. All right, guys. So basically. This is what we've got. We've we've got to use this result somehow, right? And what you can what you can see, well, you can see well if you just imagine just changing, what we can, we can actually write this out in a different way. We can say well, if we just change from f to g, which is absolutely fine, we'd have something like this. That's g of x zero, g to the minus one, of y with respect to y equals x, g of x. Now, if you look, if we look at if we look at this first term here compared to uh, this term here, 
uh, we can actually see that x is equal to uh, 2. So what we need to do is to just be like, okay, well, that must mean that then uh, between 2 and 0, g of t with respect to t plus g of 2, and 0, g to the minus 1, y with respect to y equals 2 times g of 2. So the first thing that we should probably do is uh, try, and, uh, try and find out what g of 2 is first. So therefore, uh, going, just going back to this formula here at the top, uh, we're actually going to have uh, g of 2 cubed plus g of 2 is simply equal to 2. Now, if, you, if we take the 2 to the other side, we'll have g of 2 uh, cubed plus g of 2 minus 2 equals 0. Now, by observation, I can see I can see already that g of two is equal to one, uh, being one possible solution because one cubed plus one minus two is simply equal to zero. However, it's a cubic term, and we uh, it's important for us to consider the possibility of uh, other possible values of g of two, uh, and I think that's pretty much what the examiner is looking for. So we we can see that um, we can see that g. 2 equals 1 is a fact, uh, g of 2 minus 1 is a fact because g of 2 equals 1 is a possibility. And then uh, we can see g squared of 2 there. And then if we put a, we're going to have to have a plus 2 over here. And we can see in this formula here that there's no squared terms. So we've got a minus, we've got a minus uh, 1 times g 2 squared here. So we need, we need a plus g of 2 there, that should cancel out all the squared terms. Now, we can see, uh, if we just let that be g squared plus g plus 2, we can see that b squared minus 4ac, that should be a 4, is equal to b squared, which is 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times c, which is 2. And we can actually see that's less than 0, so therefore, no solutions uh, exists here. So basically g of 2 equals 1 is the only uh, possible value. So there we have it. Uh, but that's not the full story. We, so we, we, we're, looking, we're looking good. Um, let's have a look. We're looking good here so far. We can, we, can, um, we can do something about this integral here. Well that's what we're trying to find out actually. Uh, so I'm all over the place here. But we can We've got this under control. We can put, we can simply just put a uh, put a one up the top here on the limits. But what do we do about this g to the minus one of y? Um, so I'm going to show you a nice little trick that uh, that all uh, where writing this is much easier and it all make a, a load more sense. All right, guys. So I've just copied that question out again, just uh, just so you guys can keep track with what's uh, what's going on. Um, So let's just have a look at this then now. We can see, we know that g of 2 equals 1, we found out. And then if we, if we rearrange this, uh, this equation here as well, make, make this first term here the subject, uh, what, we should, what we should have then is the following. We've got g of t, uh, we've got the integral of that, uh, and that's going to be equal to 2 times g of 2, which is 2 times 1, which is 2. So we've got a 2 there, and then we've got minus g of 2, again we've got 1 at the limit here, we've got g to the minus 1 of y with respect to y. Now this is, now, this term here is going to be a big problem because, well, some of you might be stumbling across here thinking what, like, what the hell do we do next? And um, like, the best thing to do is to, it, this is where, this is what separates I think, um, like exceptional students at STEM mathematics who can figure this sort of thing out to to students that um, that would that would struggle. And the only way you're going to get over this is by just spend take as long as you need, pause the video, and just try and figure that out. If you can figure it out, you get a million times more value out of this uh, question. Okay, uh, and also makes you better at overcoming those stone brick wall problems. That you might have in other step questions as well. So, 
it gives you this formula here, don't it? So what have we got here? We've got g of t cubed plus g of t equals t. Now, what we can do, we can say, well, suppose we... What can we rewrite at the right-hand side of this equation by? Well, we can say, well, well that's simply the same as the saying g to the minus 1 of g of t. Okay? Now, it helps us to, to write it like that because we need to somehow bring an inverse into this. Now, look at this. How can we make the right-hand side of this equation the same as what's going on in this integral here? And have a think about it. And think about what else we've got here. Like, if we just replace, if we simply just change the variable and replace g of t for y itself, what we'd actually have is the following. We'd have y cubed plus y equals g to the, mon, g to the minus 1 of y. Well, that's great. So we can actually, we can replace this formula, we can replace this term into here and have something more like this, which is much easier to work with. So... Uh, therefore, the integral between 2 and 0 of g of t with respect to t equals 2 minus... Now we've got something which is much easier to work with, y cubed plus y with respect to y. That's going to be 2 minus... Um, uh, that's going to be y to the 4 over 4 plus half y squared between the limits of 0 and 1. Uh, that's 2 minus, uh, that's going to be that's simply just a quarter plus a half, uh, and then uh, no terms to follow with a 0 after that, uh, that's, which is simply just equal to 2 and quarter, or 9 over 4. And that concludes the first part of uh, the question. All right, guys. So now for the uh, final part of the question, it's giving us something. Uh, it's giving us something a bit more, uh, quite similar to this. But really, uh, we we need to prove. We still need to prove that h of t, h dash of t, is going to be greater than zero. And the other thing as well, does h of zero actually equal zero? Uh, and that's something we need to figure out in order to use in order to use this first uh, this first result just here. If it doesn't, then we might have to think outside the box uh, a little bit uh, a little bit more. Okay, so let's let's start by just uh, differentiating. Uh, so we've got so if we differentiate implicitly, we can see that three h of t squared times h dash of t. Uh, plus h dash of t uh, is simply just equal to 1. Now that looks, we can see that the result follows, we can see that the, um, sorry about that, uh, we can see that the uh, result follows that uh, h dash of t is greater than 0. Now we don't have to explain that and the reason why is because we, um, we managed to show that uh, just we managed to show that just here. The only difference is that you've got uh, you've got the g uh, uh, h instead of a g. Okay, so but we do have to do something about uh, figuring this out here. H of zero equals zero. Now I can see already, I can see clearly that uh, if we if we go h cubed of zero plus h of zero equals 0 plus 2, we can see already that if h of 0 is equal to 0, then 0 cubed plus 0 would equal 0 plus 2, which doesn't work. Uh, so basically, uh, we can see that h of 0 does not actually equal, actually equal 0. So what we need to do, uh, it'd, be, it'd be a good start if we, if we just try and figure out what h of 0 actually is, because that because of this result, basically we can't uh, we can't use we can't use this result here. Like it's, the sketch, it's going to look nothing like this, which means that this formula here uh, falls apart. So we need to make some minor adjustments and try and come up with another formula which is similar. A lot, of, I think, a lot of people. I was reading the exam reports. They've uh, they just 
they've, 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 they've still used the assumption that this formula is correct, and then they end up getting like the incorrect answer. You won't drop that many marks, but it's it's a difference between getting four marks, getting the full twenty marks, and uh, maybe dropping a couple of marks and getting like seventeen or eighteen marks. So I just wanted to sort of point that out. Anyway, I'm uh, I'm blabbering on. So let's look at this. We've got h cubed zero plus h of zero, uh, and then we can put a minus two to the other side equals zero. Now I can see just by observation that h of zero equals one is a uh, possible solution because one cubed plus one minus two equals zero. So we know that uh, h zero h of zero minus one is a factor. And then we've got h squared 0 here. Uh, we, we know we've got to have a plus 2 here because of a minus 2 term uh, just here. Uh, we don't have any h square uh, h of 0 squared term, so, and we've got a minus 1 times h squared of 0 here. So we must have a plus h of 0 here to cancel out the squared terms. And, uh, and we can actually see here that uh, because b squared minus 4ac is equal to, uh, you've got b squared, which is 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times 2 is less than 0. So therefore, we've got no solutions. We've got no further solutions of h of uh, 0. So therefore, h of 0 equals 1 uh, is the only uh, uh, solution. OK, now um, let's uh, do the same as before. And let's just try and figure this out. In fact, let's figure this out with a sketch. I think that's probably the best thing to do. And then we can move on and we can write out uh, we can write out a generic formula here. So first of all, what's going on? What's going on with this? We know that the curve of uh, h of t does not go through the origin. We also know that h of 0 equals 1. So therefore, we must have a 1 up here. Um, so if you, if you think about it, uh, we're going to have... I'm going to call this... I'm going to call that h of 0. I'm going to call this h of 8. And the reason I've put an 8 there is because... Uh, we've got this uh, 8 at the top limit here, uh, and then if we imagine this is 8 here, the curve is behaving like this. So looking at the curve, we can actually see it, it's not quite the same as what we found out, but we can actually see just by looking at that, that uh, uh, the integral of... Uh, h of t uh, between 8 and 0 with respect to t plus the integral of uh, h of 8 h of 0 of um, h to the minus 1 y with respect to y must be equal to again same as before base times height uh, it's simply just 8 times um, h of 8 okay so it's almost the same as what we it's almost the same as what we found out here but it's just this bottom limit here it's not a zero uh, it's actually it's actually h of zero and that's a big difference because h of zero doesn't actually equal zero but it makes sense if you think about it so this this first integral here represents this area here under the curve and then the second integral represents the area here under the curve, and you're still getting you're still getting the rectangle as well. So that's just something to take into consideration. Uh, we still need to find out as well what uh, h of eight actually is. So let's do that next. So we've got h uh, cubed of eight plus h of eight equals, uh, and this time it's actually going to be t plus 2, which is 8 plus uh, 2, which is equal to uh, 10. Now, let's just do the same as before. We can see 
Uh, again, by observation, I can see that h of 8 equals 2 is a uh, possibility because 2 cubed plus 2 is, two uh, is 8 plus 2, which is equal to 10. So therefore, if we bring the 10 to the left-hand side, again, because we've got to consider the possibility that there could be uh, another possible value of h of uh, 8 with it being, with it being a cubic uh, equation. Uh, we can see that h, we've got h of 8 um, minus 2. Then we've got h squared of 8. Um, uh, we get, we're actually going to have a plus 5 here this time. And we know also that the squared term, we've got a minus 2h of 8 squared here. So that must mean you've got a plus 2 h of 8 here as well. And you can actually see you can actually say, see that no solutions exist here because b squared minus 4ac is actually equal to, uh, you've got 2 squared, which is 4 minus 4 times 1 times 5, which is 4 minus 20, which is less than 0. So therefore, we can see once again that h of 8 equals 2 uh, is the uh, only uh, solution. So that's another piece of a jigsaw puzzle which we've uh, determined here. Uh, and if we rearrange, if we actually rearrange this equation to make uh, this integral here, uh, the subject, and basically just get it on its own, because that's what we try to evaluate, uh, we can see we've got 8 times h of 8, which is 8 times 2, which is equal to 16. And we can bring this integral here. We've also de we've determined h of 8 equals 2, and h of 0 is equal to 1. And we've got h to the minus 1, y with respect to y. But we still need to figure out, uh, we still need to find a replacement for h to the minus 1 of y because it's not it's not really very good uh, at sort of working with at the moment. So as before, let's use this formula here. So we've got h of t cubed plus h of t. So we've got h of uh, t cubed plus h of t equals t plus 2. Now, as before, we can say that h uh, of t cubed plus h of t uh, minus 2 equals h to the minus 1 of h of t, which is basically just equal to t. And then we can replace h of t with y, so we can let y equal h of t. Therefore, y cubed plus y minus 2 is equal to um, h to the minus 1 of y. And then what we can do then, we can just we can use that result, put that back into the integral. And uh, therefore, we've got uh, this integral here, integral between 8 and 0 of sorry, h of t, respect to t, uh, which is equal to 16 minus, uh, we've got, what's going on here? Just one second. All right, guys, I was just having a few problems with the software, then it decided to shut itself down, uh, as it does uh, very often. So just a quick recap. So we know what h to minus 1y is, and we're putting this result back in. So uh, therefore, we've got, we've got this y cubed, uh, plus y minus 2 with respect to y. And now we've, we've actually got something now which is uh, rather straightforward to uh, work with. Uh, so therefore, result between 8 and 0 of h of t with respect to t equals 16 minus. Now we're going to have a y to the 4 on 4 plus y squared over 2 minus 2y uh, between limits of 2 and 1. Uh, that is going to be equal to 16 minus um, we've got um, uh, 2 to the 4 over 4 which is 16 over 4 which is 4 plus y squared on 2 which is 4 over 2 which is uh, 2 minus 2 times 2 which is minus 4 and then uh, working with the 1 limits uh, with the bottom limit here you've got 
uh, y to the 4 over 4, which is y over 4, plus 1 over 2, uh, minus uh, 2 times 1, which is minus 2. So we can see already the, uh, the plus 4 and the minus 4 cancels out. So we've got 16 minus 2 minus minus, which is plus uh, a quarter plus a half minus 2. Uh, and that's going to be 16 uh, minus, minus 2 here, minus another 2 here, which is uh, minus 4, uh, plus a quarter plus a half, which is 16 minus 4, which is 12 plus a half plus a quarter is 12 and 3 quarters. And, uh, and that is the final answer, guys. And if, if any of you have got any questions uh, about, uh, this, uh, about this video, anything that you don't quite understand, then be sure to leave a comment in the comment section below and I will be sure to get back as soon as I possibly can. I really do enjoy doing these videos, guys. Uh, my aim is to basically get all of these solutions uh, onto uh, onto the internet uh, because uh, I feel like I feel like it's helpful for me to explain F and step by step. Uh, there's loads of solutions online where that you can read over, but it doesn't always make it very clear with how um, how you go from one step to the next. So I like to think that I'm quite helpful in the, in that area of things as well, being able to break everything down into simple terms. Okay, guys, if you like this video, smash that like button, subscribe, and tap that notification bell. Uh, we'll be coming out with more content in the very near future. Thank you very much, guys, and see you in the next video.